Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Waldorf Inspired Roots where we share our Waldorf Inspired homeschool journey and family adventures. Today's video will be part one of a series of videos where I am going to share our 10th grade curriculum choices and resources for our Waldorf Inspired homeschool. This first video is going to share our first American history block that will cover the colonial American time period. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and say hello down in the comments. first main lesson block for 10th grade is going to be American history and he's actually going to have a total of four American history main lesson blocks throughout the year. This book is called Everything You Need to Ace American History in One Fat Book and this uh, book is going to be his main textbook that will be like the guideline to help us stay on track throughout the year and make sure that we're covering all of the pertinent things that he needs to learn. Now this one in particular is the complete middle school study guide. There isn't one in this series of books for high school, though they do have some uh, subjects that are high school uh, level books, but American history is American history. Uh, what he would learn from you know, a middle school uh, textbook for American history is the same thing he would learn for high school, except he might learn it in more detail. For my son in particular, he struggles with a vocabulary recall delay, uh, which just means he has a hard time um, uh, retaining or, or remembering new vocabulary words that he comes across, and he's pretty much overcome it throughout the years. We don't notice it a whole lot, but we do try to uh, make sure that we're teaching everything we teach, taking out the fluff when it comes to, um, and all the extra, not super necess necessary uh, things when it comes to the textbook itself. That's how my son learns best. So, uh, and I think this textbook is great if you're doing a Waldorf inspired curriculum because It'll give you um, all the pertinent information, but then it gives you the opportunity to pull in other resources to, you know, pull in the different learning styles and the different, um, you know, things that are typical in a Waldorf school. So this book we will use throughout the whole school year um, in four different, um, blocks. So his first American history block, which is what we'll be talking about today, is going to cover units one and two of this block. Uh, and it is going to be primarily colonial America. So uh, the way that I work this, I'm a huge post-it note fan. So the way that I work this is when I'm uh, uh, forming the block um, or several blocks, uh, main lesson blocks for any subject, I first figure out what are my, you know, main, uh, you know, resources and, and curriculum and books that I'm going to be using. And then I figure out how much time I want to spend on different parts of that, how much time I think it'll take. Uh, this will probably take much longer than the amount of time I have to devote to this. So we will revisit some of these things in more detail next year and we will throw in some American history, uh, maybe one or two American history blocks next year or maybe just history in general because this year for ninth grade he did world history and we use this this series of books as well for world history. So we'll probably revisit world history and American history and just touch on some of the things I feel like needed more elaboration and more, you know, more coverage. So anyways, uh, the way that I do it, in, on the inside cover of the textbooks that I'm using, and oftentimes the other resources I'm using will get post-it notes as well, so I know how, you know, how I had 
thought of or planned to use the book, um, I will put how I'm using it. So for example, uh, I will be doing units one and two for American history, his first American history block. And then I put notes on what the bullet points are or the main points that that will cover. And that includes Native Americans, explorers, Christopher Columbus, slavery, Jamestown, 13 colonies, Mayflower pilgrims, Salem witch trials, pre-revolutionary war, and the Boston Tea Party. Uh, the pre-revolutionary war Boston Tea Party kind of will uh, be the bridge between these two. So we'll revisit, you know, some of these things at the beginning of the next unit. And so uh, just uh, really quick, I will say his second unit block of American history will be primarily about the Revolutionary War. The third American history will be primarily about the Underground Railroad and the Civil War and, you know, uh, heading west. The last American history block is going to be our longest. I believe this one is five weeks and it's going to cover World War One, the Great Depression, World War Two. Uh, Pearl Harbor, the Holocaust, uh, Vietnam War, Korean War, and I don't know how much of like Vietnam War and Korean War and things like that we'll get to, and then some of the more recent, even more recent history, uh, so those might definitely be things we have to carry over to next year, but we'll get as far as we can. Uh, so anyways, this book, if you're not familiar with it, the way that it works, everything highlighted in yellow are vocabulary words. Everything that is highlighted in green are definitions and everything in blue pen are important people, places, dates, and terms. And then there's also um, doodles and things like that. So for our first unit, unit one, uh, it is broken up into several chapters. Each unit is broken up into several. So this is prehistory uh, to the early 1600s. And as you can see, it is very um, vocab, definitions, uh, it's very clear. It does take out a lot of the fluff, but it's also a lot of information. For sure, It's it covers all the bases, and then we can elaborate on the things that we want to elaborate on, uh, or that I feel need more elaboration and things we want to uh, delve into deeper. So uh, this is kind of, I mean, the chapters, this one is a really short chapter, actually. They're not typically this short, but they are pretty short. At the end of each chapter, it will have a section called Check Your Knowledge, where it will ask questions, and then on the reverse side, it will have the answers. And the way that we use this part of it is I will... I will have this book and I will orally ask him the question and then I'll flip it over. Uh, usually I, I know because we do sit down to learn together, but I will flip it over anyways. And I will make sure that he can explain to me what's going on. Now for us with our homeschool, we grade on a mastery grading scale, which means we don't move on from one thing until he's mastered it. You know, and then we would move on to the next thing. And so by the time he finishes th this book, I can confidently say that he has a pretty good understanding of American history and a pretty good knowledge base of American history. So that's how we grade. And in a future video, I can talk about how we do transcripts and um, how we're planning to do, you know, his diploma and things like that. And that also will vary state to state on what's required for that. But for here in Nevada, I can explain to you how that will work. Um, but anyways, so that's how that works. So here are the resources that we will be using. The first resource that I wanna show you is the Smithsonian Timelines of Everything. And the reason why I wanna show you this first is because I've already um, done all my post-it notes. And so I can kind of show you how I go through what I'm planning a unit. So I don't know if you can see this very well, but I've got all my post-it notes here. So I can easily go through, and I've already been through this book. This is all of history. Uh, there's, you know, bits and pieces from everything. So I went through and found the things that are relevant to what we're doing. And so as you'll see, it says American History 1. This is about Colonial America. It's a timeline. Uh, this will be a great resource. And then I turn to the next page and it is slavery in the US. This is part of what our unit is too, so I marked it American History 1. 
the next sticky note that I come to says American history too. And it's about uh, birth of the US, the Revolutionary War, uh, all of these things. And so then I know, okay, that's for the next one. And I've gone through and labeled, as you can see, we've got American history three, American history four. So, um, you know, all, everything is labeled and that's how I kind of go through that. Now, the next book that I wanna talk to you about, I actually have two here, hold on. Okay, so this book I actually just picked up at Costco. I picked up several. There were, I believe, four. There was a science one, an animals one, and then maybe uh, one about biology or the human body. I forget. Uh, but this one is the history book. It's by Miles Kelly. Uh, I will link everything below uh, that I can find, you know, um, and where I found it. And... Um, you know, if, if I don't know where it is, I apologize, then it wouldn't be linked, but I will do my best. Uh, so this book I, I got because it did just seem to have a lot of pictures. I love pictures. I love especially photographs that kind of show things or, or pictures of newspaper articles or things that it's kind of like a museum in a book, which is the closest thing that you can get to actually going to a museum without actually going. And so I love books like this. Uh, and I haven't marked this one up yet. I don't know how much of it we'll use. Um, and I can do an update video later to show you, you know, what we ended up using from, you know, all the resources I show you today for each of our units. But I know that there will be uh, plenty of things from American history in here or things that pertain to what we're talking about throughout our units. So I'm just kind of flipping through to show you some of the, the pictures and, um, you know, photographs and things. So we, you know, and then there's an index, which is great. And so I'll probably use this to help me figure out, you know, what I want to use from here. Um, but I think that'll be a great resource for um, all, you know, all history um, main lesson blocks that we do in the future, as well as this one. And so, okay, the next book, this is called America's Monuments, Memorials, and Historic Sites. And it is... Um, Publications International LTD. Now this is a book that my mother um, got for my sister and I when we were young and so we've had this book forever. If I can find it I'll link it if it's still published. We'll probably use this book quite extensively and this one is primarily photographs of you know different uh, monuments and, and things and museums and and things and so um, you know, it's all beautiful, beautiful photographs with quite a bit of information. And so we'll just go through, uh, I will post it note this whole book, uh, you know, before we start the unit. But I did just want to kind of show you what some of these photos look like. I think that they're beautiful. This is going to be a great addition to this unit. Kind of some of the photos really give you a sense of you know being there so and there you have it okay so the next type of books or the next type of resource rather that i want to talk about are picture books besides the reference type picture books which these are our reference type books as well but these most people would typically think are for uh, children, you know, small children, younger children. Uh, but I love, you know, picture books and children's books um, because it really tells a story or tells about the the subject or the times or or whatnot for any subject in a very simple and beautiful and often um, easy to follow, easy to understand way. And so. Uh, it's it's a way to learn information um, very easily and it's also something that um, there is a lot of information uh, this book in particular is called if you sailed on the Mayflower in 1620 it's by Anne McGovern and this book is set up where it asks a question and then it answers it and there's you know pictures and, and you know illustrations but there are a lot of questions and it's all about the Mayflower and the Pilgrims. Um, but I'm gonna show you how much. So 
who were the pilgrims and then it answers it where does the pilgrim story begin and then it answers it and i believe this one in particular yes it spans several pages so the answers are you know simple enough to get through it quickly but still elaborate enough to help you to really understand uh, the answer to you know the question or understand what's going on but this book we might uh, read several of the questions you know we might go through uh, several pages a day it'll probably be a read aloud at the beginning of our main lesson time and it's something that we can get through in a few days a week tops and that's dependent upon how many pages we do a day uh, but this is something that it could be like our you know our starter to our our main lesson you know time and um, things like that so it's something we can get through quickly um, but still giving a lot of information the next book is a kid's life in colonial america and it is by i'm probably going to mispronounce this so i apologize sarah machajewski and this book uh just talks about what it would be like to be a kid in colonial america it has maps and uh, illustrations and some photographs as well I think this one might actually be a painting uh, you know I, I actually this this book in particular and actually the next two books I show you are new to me uh, but I think they'll be great additions this one has less uh, text than the last book that I showed you but still it looks like enough that it will um, give us quite a bit of information and the photographs and, and illustrations are really nice. So I think we're gonna like this quite a bit. So there's that one. The next one is called Mayflower 1620, A New Look at a Pilgrim Voyage, and it is by National Geographic. And this one has real photographs, uh, probably of uh, reenactments and things like that from the Mayflower. Um, the the photographs are fantastic and this one seems to have a, a lot of information but we'll use all of these four picture books that I'm showing you in the same way as far as doing a read aloud at the beginning just to kind of start our main lesson time each day um, but this is what some of the photographs look like they look absolutely wonderful oh especially that one that's great Oops, sorry and then I think that's about it. So the next book is The New Americans, and it is Colonial Times, 1620 to 1689, and it's by Betsy Maestro. This one is all illustrations. There is quite a bit of, of text, but again, it's one that we can get through very quickly. The illustrations are wonderful in this book as well. They're very um, whimsical and uh, engaging. There you have that. The next thing that I want to show you, I actually thought was a book when I when I initially picked this up, um, but it is not, and I was pleasantly surprised at what it actually is. So this is um, Colonial America Primary Sources. It has 20 primary sources, and it's by Carol Marsh. Now, the next page um, and it is cardstock it's very uh, nice quality cardstock and even the um, you know the print or the ink on the print feels uh, it's slightly 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 raised and kind of glossy it does have a texture it's so nice though um, but it on this page it lists the 20 primary sources so I will be able to go through here quickly and figure out okay which ones will pertain to which section that I'm doing the way that I was thinking I would use these and and I'll let you know in an update video if this is how we actually end up using these but we can um, this year I really want my son to learn how to and kind of master how to find credible information online and how to fact check um, that information that he finds with multiple sources and so this basically just has the primary source 
uh, the original, you know, document um, or a, you know, reprint or whatever of the original document or thing. And then it tells what it is and when it's from. So this is map of James Fort at Jamestown 1607, and there's the map. So the way that we'll use these then is I'll probably have him start looking up more information about, you know, Jamestown, um, more information than what we have already, we would have already discussed in the book, or maybe we'll even do this first and have him look up information online, fact check that information, tell me where he sourced it from, and I'll probably pick a number like, uh, tell me 10, 10 things that you can um, teach me, learn, and then teach me about, you know, this um, topic. And then we would probably do that for all of these, but here's another one. It's a painting entitled The Mayflower Compact. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I will just kind of quickly flip through so that you can see what some of the images are. I apologize that some are sideways. I do want to get through it kind of quickly, though I don't want this video to get too long. <laughs> um, so there you have it. like a journal article. I believe this is the last one. Yep. So there you have it. So those are our primary sources for Colonial America. Now the next thing that I want to talk to you about are chapter books. I like to pull chapter books. Sometimes we'll pull ones that we've already read. Every time you read a book, you learn new information or you'll uh, realize something that you didn't catch the last time. So we definitely reread books on occasion, but, and he has read this one, I believe in fourth or fifth grade. And this is, I would say a fourth or fifth grade reading level. Um, so this one will be an easy read for him. And there are books throughout all of his American history uh, units and his other um, main lesson blocks that some are easier, some are harder. Uh, because this is his first main lesson block of the year, I was trying to start it out not too hardcore. <laughs> uh, but this is The Sign of the Beaver. It's by Eliz Elizabeth George Spear. It is a uh, Newbery Honor book. It is the story of a young boy and his father, and they go to build a house um, to have more land or, you know, um, further west, I believe. And uh, the father goes back to get his mother and his siblings, and the boy uh, stays behind to look after the house that they had built. And I believe the uh, he runs into a Native American who ends up helping him through uh, some challenges and, and uh, things that he has to overcome um, before his family joins him. And so this is a really, really good book. I really, um, I read this when I was younger as well, so we like this one. The next book he hasn't read, but he likes this type of book. He's n he's not the biggest fan of reading. Um, he's he's become a decent reader. He just doesn't enjoy it very much. Um, however, he is uh, he does enjoy it a lot more so than he used to. So that's a win in my book. This book in particular is called The Salem Witch Trials. It's an interactive history adventure, and it's by Matt Doden. It has three story paths, 39 choices, and 15 endings. And I do want to show you what that means. <laughs> so there are only five chapters. And the way that this book works, the first page will tell you basically how to use this book. Um, and then starting on the next page, that would be chapter one. And at the bottom of every page, it'll say either turn the page this one also says turn the page. And then you'll come to a page that says, it gives you choices. To be a young woman defending herself against accusations of witchcraft, turn to page 13. To be the son of an accused woman, turn to page 47. To accuse someone of being a witch, turn to page 77. I'm going to choose to be a young woman defending herself against accusations of witchcraft, so I'll turn to page 13, which is the next page. So then I would read this. At the bottom it says turn the page, I would continue reading, it says turn the page, and I would keep going until I got to where it has the next choices section. And when I would get to that, I, after having read, I would make my decision of what I, as the reader, want to do next. 
until I complete, you know, and get to an ending. So you can read this book many times and choose different things each time and have different stories and different, you know, endings because of that. And so, um, because it's interactive that way, my son loves these. I believe I have two or three of these types of chapter books for um, some of his history main lesson blocks. Uh, so he'll be really excited that I picked some of those up for him. The next thing I'd like to talk about is projects. That's another thing that we try to incorporate. This book is going to be our main source of um, project ideas. Now this book is not just projects. It's called Great Colonial American Projects You Can Build Yourself, but it has a lot of information about, uh, you know, um, the topic as well as pro it's not just projects. So I'll just kind of flip through a little bit and just so that you can kind of see um, there's so much information and then you would get to a page as soon as I get to one I will stop there um, so you would get to a page that would say make your own ball and triangle game it'll tell you the supplies and how to make it and it has a little illustration of what that will look like uh, this page says make your own ring and pin game there's that this one in particular doesn't have instructions but this says native american games and toys and this is talking about a corn husk doll we'll probably do this because this is really fun uh, but we'll just look up a tutorial on how to do this on our own. Um, some of the other projects that we'll be doing this year include uh, build your own miniature waddle and daub house, build your own bricks, that would be interesting, um, make your own straw tick, make your own dipped candles, we will for sure be doing that, and making your own candle holder. Uh, make your own silhouettes, make your own broom, make your own braided rug. That would be fun. So yeah, I mean, we'll go through and we'll, I'll post it note this as well. Um, so we won't do all of these, obviously, because we only have four weeks to do it. And we only do school here at home four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesdays, we have a co-op and that's the day we volunteer at a local farm. So, um, but yeah, make your own yarn. I actually want to learn how to do that anyway, so that'll be fun. Marigold dye, uh, finger knitting. That's something that we have already planned. This is a very Waldorf act, uh, inspired activity anyways, and so we'll for sure be doing that. And I'll just kind of flip through the rest, but there it's full of projects and information and, uh, you know, illustrations and um, that uh, great resource. I definitely am excited for that one. The next type of thing that I'm going to show you are games. So we have two games. Both of these games are actually from The Good and the Beautiful. As you can see here, this one is as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can order just the games. I will link them below, but um, we did year one, um, the year one history course of the good and the beautiful. We did not make it all the way through, and I will tell you why. Um, it's a wonderful curriculum. They have four years of history, and the way that they work their history is they start at the beginning of history and they come to, you know, relatively current uh, not too far in the past history every year, but they stop at different um, important uh, times or events, different ones each year. Um, and so you would need four years to complete to get the full, um, you know, the full uh, history. So, and the other thing is it's a year long course and it's one that you need to do every day. And for us this year, my son did sort of a hybrid block schedule where he did one subject every day on a rotation. So for example, Mondays would be algebra, Tuesdays would be uh, world history, Wednesdays are you know, co-op and farm, Thursdays would be 
biology or you know that that's how we did it and he would do a week's worth of that one subject every you know every week but in order for us to fit in the five days worth of you know the good and the beautiful's history it was very very time consuming um, and it was a lot and it's a great curriculum if you do more of an everyday like a one you know a subject every day of the year and if you break it up by subjects but for us uh, we don't work as well that way as far as me teaching it and him um, you know doing his schoolwork that way so we chose to not use their curriculum but the games and the resources are absolutely fantastic and the curriculum is is fantastic if you you know do your homeschool that way uh, so I do recommend them if you do your school that way now we do still use the good and beautiful for their science their science um, units are set up in unit studies so you can do it in more of a traditional Waldorf way because they're unit studies so we love their science and okay so this is the game board now we have we also had picked up the good and the beautiful's um, history um, year two history we haven't even opened it yet uh, to be honest <laughs> but this game did come in it and we will definitely be using that this year um, so this game that was in year one this is uh, world his I mean it's world and American history kind of all combined and there were certain areas or, or uh, events that they stopped on and so those are kind of some of the things that they picked up on now because he did world history this year uh, and he's doing American history for 10th grade uh, I'm okay with us still playing this game even though it's got more than just what we're going to be focusing on you know this year because it'll just be a review for what we've already done so the way that this game works is you roll the dice and you move your little um, your little uh, players piece around the board and when whatever you land on say you landed on Joan of Arc um, you would go through or or the person uh, the person who's going to be challenging you uh, would take the card the correct card and I normally ask my son do you want me to t uh, do you want to do question one two or three and he would tell me having not seen them he doesn't know what they are and I would read um, Joan of Arc was a young peasant girl from blank who took leadership of the blank army after she had visions from God and he would have to fill in the blanks if he got it right then um, he would get the card I would hand him the card and he could put a chip on the board to show that we've already done it and so then we would skip that the next times um, and he would get the points for it now at the end you add up your points and we play until the cards are gone sometimes it takes a long time or sometimes you know we'll play to points where you know whoever hits 30 points first or it depends how much time we have to play but I am going to show you some of the illustrations on some of these cards there's Paul Revere the Magna Carta and I'll just kind of flip through Um, Berlin Aircraft, George Washington, I mean the illustrations are wonderful, quite fantastic actually. So there's those. So this will be a really fun game for us to play and we've already played it so it's a familiar game so this could also be a May lesson, um, you know, warm up or whatever you want to call it. Now this next one we have not played, so I'm not 100% sure how to play it, although I did kind of glance at it already. So I kind of have an idea. So it does come with an answer key, um, the instruction card, and then it has two kinds of cards. It has cards that I'm gonna flip through right now that um, I've got uh, Lewis and Clark, I do not know how to pronounce that, I apologize, but we'll just kind of flip through. So again, it's probably the same illustrator, I don't know that for sure though, but they look very similar, the illustrations. And so this is just kind of uh, some what the cards look like. And then you get these cards, and 
this first one, for example, says these two friends were chosen by President Thomas Jefferson to explore the map uh, to explore and map the interior of the United States. They traveled all the way to the Pacific Ocean. The answer to that would be Lewis and Clark, I do believe. Um, so that would be that one. And up here it says 20. I would come down here and yes, I was correct. So then I would get to keep these. And then I'm not 100% sure if this is actually, um, let's see. So if you guess the name of the explorer or settler, um, then you get to turn over the dark blue card. Um, so yeah, you would be laying them all out on the table. Not sure how you win. Um, oh yeah, okay, so <laughs> how to win. If you're playing for a set period of time, try to beat the number of matches all of the players got collectively the last time you played. If you were playing until all of the matches are obtained, uh, time the game and try to beat the total time it took to obtain all of the matches the last time you played. So uh, yeah, that'll be a fun game. And that is actually the last um, uh, you know, curriculum resource that I have for this particular unit. The only thing that I don't have yet are some of the supplies for uh, like the projects and things like that. I can always do, um, you know, a video showing some of the supplies that we get for the different subjects. We'll see, um, you know, if you want to see something like that, let me know. But I hope that you uh, were able to get, you know, some inspiration. I hope I was able to help anybody who is putting together a, you know, colonial America or American history uh, main lesson with some, uh, you know, curriculum ideas and resources. And the next video that I do will be the second American history unit, which will be the American Revolution. Uh, and then, you know, I've got the next two that I had already talked about. We also, um, I'm also going to be putting together a chemistry um, main lesson um, video, a uh, curriculum choice video, and a geometry, a creative writing, a geology, Spanish, and then I also have his daily uh, morning basket, his daily work that he does. Uh, I will put together, you know, what is going to be in his daily basket for next year. I already have a video of what's in his daily basket. Uh, or his morning basket, excuse me, um, for this year. So I will put out one for what will be in it next year. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Say hello down in the comments. Share. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining. Bye.